to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, oh, welcome in. Hey, it's football time. We're back. Heck yeah. This is great football time. Last Thursday sucked. <laughs> but we're back, baby. We are so back. It does seem on the surface like it'll be a more exciting experience this Thursday. No, it's not surface. This is deep. Yeah, I mean, the Rams. Be careful. The roots. Yeah, be I know. I will, careful. I will not be careful. He's living on, on the edge over here. Well, yeah. we're, we're, we got players returning from injury, so, you know, we don't want, we don't want it to become a, a downer. Well, that's why it's going to be an upper. We've got... Um, I just don't want them to get hurt again, Jason. We, they can't no, get hurt on the sideline. No one wants them to not get hurt again more than yours truly. That is... Uh, I have puka everywhere. I don't know if you could handle it. I, I, You know what? It would be a blessing in disguise because it would just... It would confirm that this season is over. It's like, move on. Trade for picks. Yeah, at this stage, it feels like you have kind of singed... Singed? Singed? Is that a... Singed yeah, is a singed, word. It's just not the one you're looking for. Hinged, hinged. Your, mm. you're, you're like playoffs hitched. There, there it go. is. There we go. First try. You cinch your pants. You singe Some, your brows uh -huh. with a flame. What, you so hitch what is, your wagon. Yeah. Yeah, that's the one. <laughs> to Puka Nakua in terms of like, you know, he's your glorious leader leading you to a championship. Yeah, I mean, it, it just so happened he was, you know, already one of the the keepers in my keeper lottery in our main league, and then in other in other drafts, it was one of those situations where I was very happy that I preferred the running backs near that one two turn we talked about during draft season. Preferred those guys, which has turned out to be uh, very um, wise over the the wide receivers that were there that were very disappointing in the second round. But the wide receiver I liked the most of that group when I was in that situation was Puka, who, you know, he looked good for a minute and then got injured. So the news this morning is that Puka's not only got the 21-day window open, but there is a chance. There's optimism. There's optimism. Yeah, there's a couple-day window. That he will play tonight. So 1 p.m., I believe, Pacific is the time that both Hawkinson and Puka Nakua have to be activated um, off of the IR, so we'll we'll know well ahead of game time if they are playing. Right now, a little bit of optimism that Puka could suit up and uh, skepticism that Hawkinson will. Well, we'll talk about it. We've got matchups today. we got starts of the week. We have news beyond those two names. We have one week until the Halloween episode of this show. Very nice. Very nice. Uh, we have... Yeah, that's that's coming up. That's always a good time. Not too old to dress up. No. What? Yeah, that's what, what? I'm just saying. No. Jointhefoot.com. You can use the ultimate dashboard over there. We've got the bonus weekly episode of the show. Bonus. We have premium tools. Especially right now, the stream finder and the strength of schedule are very valuable week to week. You can get access to that and the premium community and everything at jointhefoot.com. Let's jump right in. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. So Cooper Cup is good to go tonight. Optimism around Puka. Jordan Whittington is out. Already been declared out. Which I appreciate after last week's nonsense. Yeah, and I think with Puka and Cooper Cup, we were not messing around with that anyways. Mike Evans will be you know, the MRI confirmed he'll be out at least four weeks, potentially back after the bye week. You know, that's that's shaky. There there are a lot of NFL buys coming up week twelve and week fourteen. So the two two of the three weeks where Mike Evans might be really valuable to you are weeks that you're gonna have to sit there like Mike said and watch the practice reports after four weeks and say, is he gonna play? Is he not gonna play? And is he gonna get hurt again because he has frequently re-injured his hamstring and uh, clearly doesn't know when he should be playing. And is he going to be listed as doubtful, that kind of nonsense where it hurts your actual league having to have him on your bench, not in your IR? 
Bryce Young will be starting this week for the Carolina Panthers against the Denver Broncos defense. <laughs> Are the Broncos the best play of any position this week? Yeah, I'd probably start them like over uh, over Brees Hall. Yeah, like if it's a, in a yeah. in a in a super flex I mean, option. Who's the QB one this week? I'd go with the Broncos. There should always be the choice to start a defense in place of anybody else at any <laughs> right, other position. At all positions, if, if you, you want to start five defense, always flex a defense. DK Metcalf. Uh, for, oh, for, go ahead. Um, go ahead. So this is not a benching of Andy Dalton. Andy Dalton. I don't know if we reported or not that he was. We, did, in we a, mentioned. Yeah. So he was in a car accident. Oh yeah, we we mentioned nobody went to the hospital. However, he did sprain his thumb in that car accident. So this is an injury that we don't know the severity or the length of time. But it is not a performance of Andy Dalton is getting the bench and Bryce Young is back. This is Bryce Young the back like, up getting the start because of an injury to the start. Bryce. It's your chance. Don't throw away your shot, I was going to say, he, he could definitely stay in this spot. It's not like Dalton's been playing well if he performs, which he won't. Adam Thielen, return to practice. What? 21-day window open this week. I, I love your Adam <laughs> Thielen voice so much. Like It brings me joy. I know that other people have to enjoy it as much as I do. It's just, there's something about every time that your Adam Thielen voice comes up that, that I, I, I see Adam Thielen waking up. Every every single time, it's he's stirred awake from a <laughs> sit, from a sitting nap. <laughs> That's what it's, yeah. and I can't stop it. Like that is it's it's like a seance. I just Adam Thielen's name is it's drawn is mentioned out of and, and he just he shows up. Well, he is uh, historically been one of the few players Bryce Young can get the ball to. So helpful. DK Metcalf didn't practice on Wednesday. He's expected to miss Thursday's practice. You're going to be keeping an eye on him. And if he was to miss. A week due to the MCL. <laughs> Don't do it. JSN and Lockett oh, okay. would be. <laughs> Thought you were gonna go, Bobo. <laughs> no, no, no. You're not going. Not a go go for Bobo. Not a go go for Bobo. No, no. I'm a no no for Bobo. <laughs> His last name is Bobo. Guys. Yeah, yeah. No, oh, yeah. No, it is funny. Whenever the all I hear is Bobo the clown. That's <laughs> yes, that's it. Yes, Nothing that's, else. That's all anyone hears. I mean, we don't pick our last name, man. Like Scataboo. But you can change it. <laughs> Yeah. Just, just letting people know. No, that's re, not re, something you do. Reach out to chosen Robbie Anderson. Let, he knows the he knows the uh, way, the laws. Yeah, Ocho he's, still, he's still Anderson though. Uh, he he's changed before, hasn't he? Flipped them around. Oh, he was Robbie Chosen. Yeah. yeah. Um, Jaden Daniels didn't there's, practice. There's no rules, man. On you can Wednesday. do what you want. I didn't hear it that. Sorry, <laughs> Jaden Daniels didn't practice on Wednesday. He's going to be seemingly a really, you know down to the wire type of situation. It is such a brutal situation for Jaden of he plays the Bears, so the matchup is already rough. But Jaden Daniels like if Jaden Daniels were not hurt, it's, okay, whatever, I don't care. I'm going to play him against the Bears. But he is hurt. It's his ribs. It just takes one the, if you had good shoulder. Jaden Daniels and you're you you've probably won some games, right? For sure. And you've been reliant on him. And you had the opportunity. I feel like something. No, no, no. Weird this is just is totally. Right no, I'm just hypothetical. I, I just. Okay. And you Are need. Are you it. trying to trade for? No, Jay no, no, no. You need. He's trying to trade me a quarterback <laughs> to replace Jaden Daniels. Gotcha. And you, there you, you need to kind of get over the hump. You'd probably give a very small amount up to fix your problem, right? For who? I don't know. Uh, Somebody, hypothetically, uh, owl hypothetically, for what, who? Maybe the same game. Oh, Caleb. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh. So here's one one thing I think is interesting. Just Meanwhile, like, Kirk Cousins is on the waiver wire. <laughs> just like – um, well, Kirk Cousins has one good game all year, and he's been 7 to 12 Who was points. that good game against? I forget. Oh, it's the team he's playing this week. <laughs> um, anyways, uh, the, the interesting thing, like tonight's game, the quarterback <laughs> against quarterback that could be potentially traded for each other, that is so fascinating. The Jaden Daniels versus Caleb Williams – if he can get the start, if he does, there's still a chance he starts. You have to factor in, like, offensive rookie of the year. It's probably going to be one of those two players. Right now, Caleb Williams is 4-2, and two, and he got off to a slow start, but he's been playing some good ball. He's actually they, scored more fancy points in both of his last two starts than Jaden Daniels. That's what I'm saying. Like, by the end of the year, you know, right now it seems like, oh, Jaden Daniels running away with offensive rookie of the year, or maybe Malik Neighbors, but it's usually going to go to the quarterback. This is a massive think, prime time. You know, I think you're right. I think is, it's a good point. It's very important for Jaden Daniels' uh, beginning legacy, if you will. It's also really important for my 
Chicago Bears DST play. Yeah, you want the Mariota? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, offensive rookie of the year, it's uh, Daniels the leader right now, then Williams, Neighbors. Uh, Marvin Harrison's still the fourth highest opportunity. What? Well, there's well, still a gap. I'm sure. I'm sure the uh, you're going to get much odds, better odds yeah, there. Yeah. Um, but it is interesting. He's tied with Brian Thomas Jr. Get get out of here. I mean, the Marvin Harrison reaction. This is the this is the negative of our fantasy football universe. It's like you know, good game, Hall of Fame, bad game, career over. Mm -hmm. And we, you know. It, there's a long way to go on the Marvin Harrison story for Arizona, and there's literally no way that the rest of the season, if Marvin Harrison is healthy, they don't improve. Like that is a guarantee. Like I will, I will promise you that Marvin Harrison's performances will improve over time. And then you say, well, some players improve over time, and their ceiling is capped. Where's Marvin's ceiling? That's why he's still in the conversation. Yeah, the, this is a fantasy football problem, and this this is why you know on our on our bust episode, Marvin Harrison Jr. was my bust. He pick was because he was going at the one two turn, which was insanity. You have to you have to have a a top eight wide receiver at that point. Anything else, and it's going to feel like a bust. Marvin Harrison has not had a bad start to a rookie season. He's had a horrific start to a rookie season for someone drafted at the 12th or 13th pick in your draft where you were relying on him to be a superstar. That is not fair to the young man. And then Malik Neighbors kind of showing him up. Yeah, and then, you know, Neighbors finally has a bad game, and, and that's a tough – I mean, every week you're going to be staring down this, who would you rather have in a dynasty? Do you want Harrison, who hasn't performed yet, with the quarterback who will be there, or Neighbors on the team where he has performed – with a different quarterback on the way. That's a great question, neighbors. That was the answer as well. Oh. Okay. <clears throat> it I heard the question mark after neighbors. Yeah, no, no, no but, I liked it. Yeah, it was just I'm I'm giving you props for what a what a difficult question, but it's 365 really, okay. from now let's return to it and see what happens. All right. right. Uh the 49ers, please watch their practice reports today, Thursday, tomorrow, Friday. Injury Blitz podcast from Matthew Betts, uh, also part of the jointhefoot.com perks because Debo Juan, uh, Juwan Jennings and George Kittle, none of them practiced on Wednesday. It's too early to be has Kittle, freaking out. Has Kittle practiced this year? I, I, I feel like he, he does is. his practicing on the field. Yeah, I'm I'm not worried about George Kittle. He's just been too consistent, too dominant. And if you if you didn't see, I think it was on on IG, uh, there was a a kid worried about the injuries in his fantasy yeah. football. League. It was and, awesome. It was really cool. Uh, Debo. Debo commented on this kid. Say, he's like, I'm good, three exclamation points. Yeah, the kid's crying about, like, Debo's in the hospital, and then he's like, C.J. Stroud's done nothing. And, and his Did dad, C.J. Stroud comment back? Oh, no. Oh. no. He's going to comment with his play this week. We're Don't gonna, you worry. I'm going to comment on <laughs> C.J. Stroud in our parlay parte yeah, later. We're, we're on opposite sides of that one. Uh, that was today's News and Notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. Starts of the week. You know he's not starting today. No oh way! Oh my gosh! The, where'd he go? Are you kidding me? The Falcon. The Falcon has flown the, the coop. The Falcon has flown the I, poop. I, I can <laughs> confirm he's not pooping. What is he oh, doing? Oh really? Yeah, he got a bloody nose. Oh my gosh! <laughs> you don't need to tell us. <laughs> I, 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 I think you no no. You oh, definitely yes. needed to tell me because what you said with the excuse was, I was going to judge it. And say you're a liar, but right. no, this going is... with a bloody nose, you can actually prove it. It's even so. It, it's either a masterful lie. I'm gonna need to see some tissues I, here. I thought he was showing me a booger at first, and I was <laughs> like, dude, I don't want to see that. And then I realized it was blood. This and then he is pointed so towards his grotesque. Nose, so. Um, it better be flowing like. Yeah, a I mean, faucet. I don't want that nose in here. That's I suppose fair. that's fair. But I mean, I I feel like you've got. If if you talk about like injury risk of football players, oh yeah, I yeah, mean yeah. the Falcon is is listed as D every episode. <laughs> what, what is the percentage of routes run for the Falcon? <laughs> yeah, he can't be, he can't stay on the field, man. He I mean, he's like he's okay. He's the Jalen Waddle of the show. He's got some talent, but it's just like he at, limps off. At every some day. point, we're gonna have to cut him. Move yeah, on. I mean, he's, just, he's leaking from somewhere. I mean, if Dennis Allen were here, he'd say I have no no <laughs> idea if this guy can produce. That's right. Dennis Allen. All right, Jason. Uh, all right. You, 
Starts of the week. <laughs> so we just talked about C.J. Stroud. We might be on opposite sides, but I have C.J. Stroud as my start of the week. He has been very, very disappointing this season. I think he's coming off like five fantasy points last week. He's had a couple big games. Um, With Nico one, Collins. One of them was in week one against Indianapolis. That was on the road. He completed 75% of his passes, went uh, 234 and two, was the quarterback eight. This week, he is at home. He is against the Indianapolis defense that has not been very good. In three career starts against the Colts, 21.5 fantasy points, 20.6 fantasy points, and 18.7 and four point per uh, passing touchdown. So he has a safe floor. I think he truly Oof. does still have a ceiling outcome in this game. And the Colts defense, they're 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 a train wreck. I mean, they're 20, they they're 28th in schedule adjusted fantasy points to the quarterback. 29th the total yards allowed per game and we talked about this in the offseason we talked about this yesterday and through this season cj stroud one of the worries about drafting him so high where we did was his splits yes he can dominate a game but if you look at his splits both home and road and good defense versus bad defense he dominates the bad defenses at home very uh last year's jared goff-esque now we we chalked a lot of that up to being a rookie. You know, it's like, oh, he you know, obviously the easier matchups are easier. But so far this year, when he's playing difficult matchups on the road, it's been really, really bad. This is a great, easy matchup at home. I think CJ Stroud like if I had him, I'm definitely starting him, even though he's oh, he had man. a bad week last week. Yeah, this we're not gonna agree here. I think this is a I, I think it'll be a down week for CJ Stroud without Nico Collins. You can't score with Anthony Richardson. The defense will be great, and it'll be a Joe Mixon game. That's my take on this. I so we have a I think, we have a diametric opposition on the view of of CJ Stroud. Joe Mixon Joe Mixon will also have a great game. The nice thing about Indianapolis is they aren't a run funnel, they aren't a pass funnel. They are just a a what would that be? That would just be a a hallway, like a like a tunnel. They're a tunnel. Mm. They're not a funnel. They just let, let I, you can go I any see. See. any side of this thing to wherever you want. I'm going to go with Tua coming back from injury. Looks like himself at practice. Uh, the the that's good. Had the great quote from Tyree Kill saying, "Here we go, yeah, start yeah. me. I'm back." And if you stashed him, this is the matchup. Arizona's secondary on the road, traveling east. They give up the seventh most points to quarterbacks. They're second to last in completion percentage allowed, and they don't have the speed. They don't have the personnel to keep up with Tyreek Hill. Um, we've seen John U involved in the screen game. We've seen Waddle, um, I you know, A-Chan. I, look, I think you can just put Tua right into your lineup against Arizona at home. The offense has, like, been, um, you know, waiting for something to happen for weeks, and I'm not, I'm not concerned about it. The Cardinals just gave up 349 passing yards to Will Disley, and I did say that on purpose. I mean, like, it was Justin Herbert, Will Disley, and Strangers. They had nobody. <laughs> Strangers. Yeah, I mean, it was just. Um, it is what it felt like. It really is what it felt like. And I'll tell you what, man. I, I've i never, ever, ever thought before last week, Quentin Johnson is an important part of an offense. Yeah, and we did. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, Mike, who's your quarterback? It's Jordan Love against Jacksonville. Uh, just going to read off some numbers just for the matchup. Uh, the Jags are 31st in passing yards allowed per game, 32nd in schedule adjusted fantasy points to the QB, 32nd in expected points added per pass attempt, and Jordan Love is playing out of his mind an 8.4% touchdown rate. Maybe that comes down someday, but I don't think it's happening this week. He, he is like, I don't, I guess, I guess you stay with Lamar. But it's like, other than that... I was going to say, who's sitting Jordan Love? Well, it's it's well, just this, about playing him over literally everybody. Literally everyone. I, if you want to make him the number one quarterback yeah. of the week, I'm fine with that. Jordan Love right now is on pace for 4,600 passing yards and how many touchdowns, Andy? Probably 38. Wait, 38, Mike? You got a guess? No. 55! <laughs> 51. You were close. Wow. I mean, he's just I was, been, just doing a bit yeah no he, he's he's been on wow. fire and i i don't mind making him a start of the week when you're really saying he's the best yes. quarterback of the week uh my running back is not a good running back uh we made fun of him uh for the first three weeks of the season when it looked like this offense needed to move away from him when the coaches talked about getting other guys more involved and then deandre swift was like hey no just kidding <laughs> the next three weeks before their bye 
he uh, he dropped kicked all of us, and yeah. uh, he was the running back three, the running back three, the running back nine. He averaged twenty two opportunities a game during that span as the clear lead of the Bears. And now here's a great matchup: this Washington Commanders matchup. We're going to talk about a lot this week. Chicago is a two and a half point road favorite. The Commanders are allowing allowing four point nine yards per carry to opposing running backs. That's twenty seventh best. Um, they rank twenty first in schedule adjusted fantasy points to running backs. It's a good matchup. You're coming off of a bye. DeAndre Swift was on fire. I, I don't want to forget what he was doing before the bye. He should definitely be started. I will go with uh, J.K. Dobbins' bounce back game against New Orleans, who is just incapable. They on, have I mean, crumbled. It, sure, you give up 147 and 2 to Saquon. Great, that's Saquon. How about 102 and 1 to Kareem Hunt? How about 203 to the Bucks running backs? How about Javante Williams? Yeah. Looks like a competent running back. <laughs> yes. Maybe even a star against you. They are dead last against running backs. They're giving up an almost 11 points above expectation. This is not the Saints defense of old. This is an old Saints defense. And I think J.K. Dobbins bounces back in a big way this week. Man, I, I, I feel like we're on opposite sides of this one, too. Um, the matchup is wonderful. Totally like that. But I, I am worried about Dobbins because he has not looked good. Like the first two weeks of the season, he looked unbelievable kept doing these breakaway runs the last month he's not looked good as a running back and and you worry about this Achilles coming back and you know we've seen it where he looked he looked okay against Denver uh, 25 for 96 yeah like, I mean that's that's it's still three, sub four it a is carry and and he got the work he's gonna get the work I love that getting the work this matchup there's a lot of reasons to like J.K. Dobbins this week I just I guess I'm not saying that this is someone you shouldn't start I'm just saying I'm throwing up the concerns? yellow, the yellow flag of like I'm worried. If he comes, put it this way: if he comes out against the Saints, and like is bad, I think you need to. I, I think then we it goes to a red flag, like maybe sit him for a while. Sure, but and then I'm gonna go with Javante Williams. Oh, I should Javante Williams. Can't say it too loud. Uh, J W. <laughs> yeah, what we're just everyone's J J W D W. Yeah, yeah. But he's playing the Carolina Panthers, 17 opportunities. That's what we love. The the Audric Estime concerns that I had earlier in the year, he has fumbled on both, uh, both, both games where he had an opportunity. And Denver's 25-point team implied total is their highest over their last 40 games. The Carolina Panthers are bad. I liked this play even before it was Bryce Young. Uh, you could hand the, the ball. Side. If you handed the ball to Javante every play, you'd win by three touchdowns. Yes, that's the way it feels in this game with Bryce Young starting in the defense. And now I don't think Sertan's going to be back unless I've got unless there's an update in the last 24 hours that he's going through protocol and going to make it back. I don't think he'll be out there. I I'd don't take think, the week off if I were him. I don't think it matters. Um, I'm going to take a quick break. Come back with wide receiver and tight end starts. All now right. again, yesterday. Hold on. Okay. Yesterday, you made a statement to me. Mm -hmm. And it was, I get it, but you don't have to do this. Right. No, I, th I thought about this with this because it's identical. You did not have to pick Calvin Ridley as your, like your second half sleeper. You kind right. of, you, you're, you're doubling you down. You don't have to you're do it. You're asking for pain, but you believe in it. And if you believe in it, you, you should do it. We don't have to do it. In fact, I think maybe it's more. We need a disguise you can put on for certain parts of the show. Yeah, this is just like a Groucho. Yes, glasses. just something I can put on so you don't know who's saying I, I, it. I think or, it's, order that, Al. I think it is worth saying this part of it for the Foot Clan. Um, when we do something like this, what I'm about to do, and what Andy did yesterday, <laughs> we aren't trying to double down on our priors. If anything, we want to get you know. I'd like to be out of. I it. would love to escape. Yeah. I, would, I would love to smoke bomb and be yeah. gone. Just be like, sorry, it was wrong. But it's because we believe it, and because um, you know, ho hopefully it is it is right. So I'm gonna need kind of some. Uh, I don't need unobtainium, Mike. You need but some I, pants. I need like a second Jeez. level of underpants. You are level two. Yeah, level two. Titanium underpants. Yeah, that feels right. It's snug. It's it's a little. It's They're actually more comfortable than I thought <laughs> it would be. But I'm going with Tank Dell. Uh, we just talked about C.J. Stroud. It's the stack for me. Um, it's now or never. And I want to remind everybody that wide receivers outside of, you know, Justin Jefferson, you look on a season and most of them have about half their games good and half their games bad. When they come in a stretch, you're like, this guy sucks. He's done. Um, 
but Tank Dell is at home in a good matchup. Is this where he starts the the half that are good? Exactly right. Um, last year against the Colts, that's where he started his breakout campaign with 10 targets, 7 for 72 and 1. Uh, the Colts are a, a pushover defense. Talked about that earlier. If you throw away the last two games, which were uh, throw away a bowl, Will Levis and Tyler Huntley, they rank 29th against the pass, 25th against wide receivers. The matchup is really, really good for him. Um, at Do home. you feel the same about him in this game that you were just saying about Dobbins against the Saints defense? Like if the struggle, it, yes, because the matchup's so good. This it, make or break is the right phrase, make, right? Make or break. I I think this is, but but both these guys, I I guess I, I see the reason to have them in the starts of the week. We're saying the process says you should still start this player. Ignore the emotion. Exactly. Follow the, follow the, the signs and signals of. A good opportunity, and then if they fail, if they fail, we will have Groucho Marx, and we will stri <laughs> and we'll strip. We'll strip the tape. All right, I'm gonna go with Darnell Mooney against the Bucks. Uh, he has been pretty boom bust, but he's the wide receiver 16 on the season. And uh, like we, hopefully the Bucks can do something, and that that's the fear. That's the fear here for anyone who is on the Falcons. But we saw him dominate the Bucks just a couple weeks ago, and the Bucks secondary still remains bad. Uh, so I think that he is a strong play. Jaden Reed against Jacksonville is my start of the week. On the other side of the Jordan Love start that Mike threw in there, we've seen the boom weeks, but we haven't seen them over the last three weeks. Still sitting at wide receiver six. I think you need a a tap on the butt that Jordan Reed uh, that Jaden Reed is going to be okay, and Jordan Love's going to make it happen against the Jacksonville Jaguars, who are dead last for wide receivers. Yes. It, yeah. Uh, at at tight end. Kyle Pitts, Mike, you you had him as your start of the week last week. It was good. Pitts has been Pittsuresquely late, lately. Whoa. Yeah, I know. All right. Boston. I, let me Boston. let me be clear. I don't know what you said. I don't even know the joke. Pittsuresque, like uh, oh, okay. like picturesque. Yeah, it's a hard word, difficult word. Anyways, <laughs> look, we're moving on. The last three weeks. If you look at his yard, 88 yards, 70 yards, 65 yards, those are great. Two of those are seven receptions. He's seeing 18% of the targets on a Falcons team that loves to throw on. Um, I, You know, that, that's been throwing a lot. Over the last month, Tampa Bay ranks 30th against tight ends. I I mean, this is a game where I th I actually wonder if Kyle Pitts is becoming an every week start where you can have confidence in him. He is in the top half of tight ends that I would want right now, the matchup is also really, really good. So I, I'm happy to start him. Did, I'll tell you, I thought about trading for Pitts, and then I didn't do it because I knew that if I did it, you'd ruin him. I'd be sad that I sure, did Sure, right. I'd be sad if I don't do it. I'll be sad if I did it somehow. Yeah, so just be sad. So, you know, my start of the week this week is the guy that I am playing over a Pitts decision. I made this choice earlier in the year. Both guys still feel shaky to me. Pitts has felt better. But it's Dalton Kincaid against Seattle. Their weak spot on the defensive side, it's the tight end. We're getting to the point where, like, Dalton Kincaid is one of the weirdest tight ends to have on your roster because he should be started every week. He got dragged down on the two last week on a 25-yard pass. That changes the outlook, right? Yep. And though it's one play there, one play here that makes the difference between a Pitts and a Kincaid. Neither of them are in the tier so low that you're like moving on to a Colby Parkinson or a Noah Fant, but neither of uh, Kincaid more specifically hasn't done enough to make you feel like I'm excited to have him in my roster, on my roster. So I'm going to go with Kincaid this week in the confidence play against Seattle, who, like I said, 31st against tight ends. They've given up at least five to Theo Johnson and Kyle Pitts That's and George wild. Kittle. Um, you, uh, I think that this is, his opportunities are guaranteed. It's just, are they going to be valuable? And I am very excited that I actually get to fully endorse this oh, player. Oh, you've just talked him up for all of today. I have – no, it's, I've really liked the player, but I just couldn't get behind a, and support for fantasy a player who had Deshaun Watson throwing him the ball with the last three years of what we've seen with Watson. But Watson's gone. Jameis is in. It's David Njoku. Uh, 14 targets this last week, and like the Ravens, you have to throw on the Ravens. People are, you don't really have a choice. The the Ravens are going to put up all of the points, and to have any type of a game, they're going to have to throw. And look, Jameis does wild stuff. He just he takes chances that Watson will not take. 
Uh, the Ravens right now 20th against fantasy tight end. So I'm just – I am very, very excited that we get to play him with confidence. All right, it's time to jump into the matchups. Very excited to talk about uh, some pretty big games. It's time for Fantasy Forecast, presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. <laughs> no, go to it. Go to go to yeah. the cam. Are we sure? Oh. About yes. Yeah. Go to the cam. Uh, go to the cam. Oh <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. No. I'm living your guys. I can't, I can't guys, do- I swear I had a bloody nose. Don't you see this Kleenex in I my nose? I can't do it. All right. I wasn't. Josh hit me. <laughs> Josh, Josh hit you? What, in the stomach? All right. Um, Philadelphia, Cincinnati. Eagles traveling to Cincinnati. They're 4-2. and two. The Bengals are 3-4. and four. The DraftKings Sportsbook line, Cincy minus 2. The over-under is 48. Without seeing the line, I was definitely on the side of Cincinnati winning this ballgame. So, them being favored... I think they're a better football team than Philadelphia is today. I think Philadelphia has benefited a little bit from working through the kinks with a soft schedule. And I'll be really curious how they play on the road in this one. Joe Burrow, the DK passing prop on him is 260 and a half yards. Without detouring too far, it I've been in an interesting place where like I've got Kyler Murray and Caleb Williams on my roster in our league of record. And when I look out at the landscape of quarterbacks, and I'll see if you guys agree with me, it's it seems a little more ambiguous this year to pick a player from that crop that you know is going to be better sure, yeah, than yeah, somebody yeah. in the middle. Like, Kyler's the, the quarterback seven. That might shock you. He's the quarterback seven. It does shock me. He had two monster games. Um, Did he? Yeah. He I was almost the feel like he one. only had one monster game. But listen, he, the point is, Baker Mayfield sitting at quarterback two. Like Lamar, 100% I want him more. Yeah. I probably want Allen and, and Hurts more. Yeah. At that point. Dak. Well, look, not yet. No. I mean, Dak, Dak yeah. is like all promise and no. Yeah, Dak is it should work. It should work. Yeah, and, and it's looked really bad and they can't run the football. So it could work, but last year is not indicative of what will happen yet. But I'm saying like who, who would you really go and trade – confidently for and the question of Joe Burrow came up to me it was like do I know that Joe Burrow is going to be a better quarterback than Kyler Murray the rest of the season I got I came up with no I don't know that yet yeah it, early before the before the season started I was concerned about the down the stretch uh schedule for the ball uh, the Bengals so that is a little concerning like their playoff weeks are pretty brutal they've got Denver in the championship week Cleveland in the week before, and Tennessee. Like, those three matchups are just, from a fantasy playoff perspective, that scares me on the on the Burrow side. But it's it's an interesting conversation when you, when you talk about what are those quarterbacks we can confidently say are going to be significant contributors this year. Jordan Love comes to mind. Jordan Love's yeah, been on fire. I'd, I'd put Love. That's fair. I mean, Lo- I, Love might be, like, in the same tier as Allen for me. That's fair. I mean, Lamar is in a tier yeah, of his, yeah, own, I'm not his own yes. right now. Jaden Daniels, you know, Jaden Daniels on a per game basis has been 1.5 points better than Kyler, and he's hurt. So that was a tough one, right? Right. Um, Josh Allen, he's like three points better. He's the he's the quarterback four. It's just an intri- like number three in points per game right now is Joe Burrow. He's at 26.1. He's got T Higgins. He's got Jamar Chase. They don't have a running game that you have great confidence in, or it. More so, you don't lean on it. That's not going to be how they win the ball game, which is important. At, when you talk about like CJ Stroud right now, you can go win the ball game with Joe Mixon. Sure. You talk about Jalen Hurts, you can go win the ball game with Saquon. Mm-hmm. They can't did. Win, can't win the ball game with Chase Brown, Zach Moss. So Joe Burrow this week. What is your confidence level going up against Philadelphia? It's got to be pretty high. Uh, like schedule adjusted, the Eagles are holding quarterbacks down, but it, it's it's at home. Uh, so, I mean, Burrow coming off the last two games on the road has been – he's been fine. Like the Giants, he was just under the 20-point threshold. Uh, this past week against Cleveland was th- – that one was kind of a, a, a bummer there. He only hit 15 points. but So I, I put my confidence as – like he's a top eight play this week, which is 
Uh, I mean, that's a must-start quarterback. Must-start is the way to describe Saquon. On the other side, he is third in the NFL in points per game at the running back position. Can you name the other two? Ahead of Saquon on a points per game basis? Yes. Derrick Henry? Yes. Uh, is it Mixon? It's Mixon. Yeah. Uh, Saquon's 17 game pace right now, 362 on the opportunities, 2,155 total yards and 17 touchdowns. And, uh, you know, Jalen Hurts and Saquon are going to be in. A.J. Brown's going to be in. And obviously, we hope Devontae Smith kind of, um, you know, I personally don't hope he comes back to form because I'm playing the Hurts Devontae Smith stack, but yeah, I think he probably will. I think Devontae Smith is someone you might want to go trade for right now. Yeah, his his DK receiving prop is fifty four and a half uh, receiving yards this game. That is just indicative that last game was a blip, and and they 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 won that game pretty handedly, even though um, they got sacked a bunch, and it was really a Saquon game. And then AJ Brown uh, had his AJ Brown play he has every week, kind of like a Tyree Kill with Tua. You know, you talked about how the. Eagles had some easy matchups to kind of figure things out, but I think also they were figuring things out without their star wide receivers. And so now with their offense healthy, this is going to be a great litmus test for both teams. We're going to find out a lot about the Eagles or the Bengals. I personally have the Eagles winning this game. Um, I think their defense has been pretty good this year, but they haven't been tested. So now that's what I want to find out is this, this defense that has been statistically you know, pretty good. I mean, they're top 10 against quarterbacks, running backs, tight ends, but they haven't played a no, lot they've of played, great offense. They played Cleveland. Daniel Jones at Cleveland. And, yeah, yeah, I mean, it, this is that's where it's like Jalen Hurts, 114 passing yards last week. So when you look at the blip, two targets for Devontae Smith, 114 passing yards, they can finally win with the running game. They can win with Saquon. Um, so he's had three games under 200 yards. Which is a risk when you have two top tier wide receivers. Like that is, you know, you talk about Tua coming back. That's because you think he can throw for 250, 300 yards. The week two, he was without A.J. Brown. Well, week two, he was also the quarterback two with yeah, under yeah, yeah. 200 passing yards. Yeah. And then week four was, was Brown back in that one? No. So it, box score hunting Jalen Hurts is, is, a, is really hard right now. There's so much context you need. Other players from this game that you want to talk about? I mean, you're starting Higgins and Chase. Mm -hmm. yep. Chase is on pace for 1,515. Uh, Higgins has been really, really good. You would start Chase Brown over Zach Moss? I yes. would. Yes, I would start yes. Chase Brown over Zach Moss. We've seen the the involvement up and the, the explosiveness is there. The only other name, Grant Calcaterra, that is the backup tight end. This is not a pick him up and start him. This is a DFS, like if you want to punt play at tight end, he, he should cost nothing. And I only bring them up because – this is years in a row where the Bengals are one of those teams you absolutely target against tight ends. They don't guard the tight end, so we've we've seen Grant have a little bit of work with Dallas Goddard being out. I would also ask you, Devontae Smith or Tank Dell, one of our top start sit questions on the website. Ooh, that that's a great question. Um, Tank Dell's my start of the week. I think he's a good start. I would not start him over Devontae Smith. Devontae Smith I has been awesome all year, other than last week. And if you look at last week, it's it's forgivable in reality because they didn't need him. They won 28 to 3 and Saquon just ran all over them. Baltimore 5 and 2 taking on the 1 and 6 Cleveland Browns. The Nick Chubb, Jameis Winston led Cleveland Browns. Baltimore 8 and a half point road favorites. The over under is 44 and a half. You are making a bet on garbage time for the Browns in this game or on their defense, kind of keeping them in it for a while. But ultimately, you're hoping that, you know, Najoku feels like the must-start of the situation, but beyond that, I'm, you know, I'm not confident with a Brown. I, I will say I am hopeful with the Browns. We saw Joe Flacco come in last year and allow the receiving options to go north. And we have also watched all season – the inaccuracy and the the frustrating playability of Deshaun Watson leading this team with Jameis Winston coming in here this isn't this is absolutely no guarantee especially against a good Baltimore Ravens divisional opponent no guarantee that oh he's going to fix things but there is hope there that's like hey maybe they throw the ball a lot more which I expect them to do they did when uh, they came in they they said that uh, they're changing the play calling duties this is going to be a much more pass over run 
team, I think, going forward with Jameis Winston with the Browns. And so I am not like starting Jerry Judy um, but you're and in Cedric on, Tillman. You're on Njoku, right? Oh, I'm, I'm totally in on Njoku. Okay. As a tight end with the targets, he's a wonderful start. But I am watching, hopefully, on Cedric Tillman and, and Jerry Judy because I think there is a world that exists going forward where their their weekly starts or one of them is if this offense actually works with a quarterback that can get wide receivers the ball. Derrick Henry's prop is set at 98 and a half rushing yards. <laughs> oh, my Lanta. He's on pace to break the all-time record. at the And, and, and that's going to be the thing to monitor at this point, the Eric Dickerson record. So, I mean, he's on pace to break it right now yardage-wise. Baltimore. Do it. Zay Flowers Do didn't it. practice on Wednesday. Something to monitor. Rashad Bateman has been consistently targeted for three straight weeks. He has. I don't mind him in this game. Browns defense 28th against wideouts. I think he's a good DFS dart throw. I think he's a good flex play. And I, then, I'm in agreement. You know, it, it, this will be – are we – are we on fire with Mark Andrews? Does he get back into the end zone? And if he does, you're going to have three straight weeks where he's probably a top five tight end. I looked at the last two years, the matchups of Mark Andrews specifically against this Browns defense, which I feel like has been good for the last two years. Um, he has had some monstrous games and some disappearing acts. G generally speaking, this Browns defense does not give up a ton to tight ends. So I think it is one of those real big hold your breath moments for Mark Andrews, I would start him over likely personally. What about Kincaid or Pitts? And I would start I those, those guys, guys. over. Like, Andrews. I picked up uh, Kate Otten off waivers. I have Mark Andrews. Are you starting at, on? At this point, Otten is in my lineup. Uh, uh, and in my uh, dynasty league, I've I, I've got uh, Mark Andrews, Mark Andrews, and Hunter Henry. And it's a legit question this week. I I think you could start either. Right. But I, you know, diving deep to make a decision at the end, it's. So that's where Mark Andrews is for me. Just because he got a touchdown in each of the last two games does not mean that he has been super involved in the offense, the yardage and the targets. They're not what they're not Mark Andrews of old. Like just five, just give give Mark Andrews at least five targets a week. And, his, and we're in a good I want spot. Five receptions. His snap percentage is down from seventy percent last year to in the fifties this year. So that would be you know that's one of those things that's going to make him a slight, a slightly more volatile start on a yes. week to week basis. Tennessee is one and five. They're taking on the Detroit Lions, who are sitting at five and one. The DraftKings Sportsbook line, appropriately, Detroit minus eleven and a half at Ooh, home. Ooh, that's a fire! Over <laughs> under, what happened? I that's, don't know. That is so hot. I don't know eleven what that and a half. Was. I mean, I feel like that's. I don't. I don't remember lines like this since the what year was Brady and Moss? I mean, the Brady Moss. Oh, those were like fourteen. Yeah. And a half those, were, lines. those were sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, eleven and a half is too small. I don't know how the Titans score. I equally don't know how the Lions don't score. Yeah, I mean the Titans have a good defense, but it's in Detroit. Too many weapons. You won't have Jamison Williams. That's a storyline here. You talk about a DFS dart throw. Tim Patrick. He's not part of the main slate, but uh, you know if you're playing that that matchup, head heads up. Patrick could be more involved. Laporta could be more involved. Jameer Gibbs. Was amazing last week. Montgomery, he had his first game outside the top twenty, getting banged up. But Goff, Gibbs, Montgomery, Amon Ra, and Laporta, I feel like are all must plays this week. <laughs> Mason Rudolph, who it, we expect him to start uh, another week for the Titans, his DK passing touchdown line prop is at a half. Yeah, zero point five. That's what <laughs> they usually have for interceptions. <laughs> the Detroit Lions. That's good stuff. They are on it the was, main slate. It was twenty. Yeah, it's a one. It's a one p.m. game. It is. Yeah. yeah. I think I know you looked up to try to put Tim Patrick in your lineup, but you didn't find him. But you, you I must, did it. I did it wrong. You must have typed. You looked Tim, Tim, Tim Patrick. Oh, Tom. Yeah. Oh, I searched Fireball. Uh, oh that yeah. Was, yeah, yeah. Yeah. The last time the Lions closed as big of a favorite, twenty six years ago. Microsoft Windows ninety eight. <laughs> is that what what was out yeah. then? Yes. This game is easy. You, the Lions are in. Do you the, play? Uh, I mean, what do you do? do you what do you do Pollard? with Tony Pollard? That's the question because Tony Pollard okay, has let's been find good. Some names. This is a very difficult Lions defense outside of Ken Bone Walker. No one has scored on the Lions in a long time. They're still second in schedule adjusted with Ken Bone on the season. One of the uh, Tampa Bay guys, Rashad White or Bucky Irving. I I feel like I'd have to go. 
Pollard there. Uh, let's go Alexander Madison. He plays the Chiefs. Pollard. Okay. So I guess you can start him, but you can't expect big things. Yeah, he's he's low end running back too. Okay. Um. All right. Anything else from this game you want to discuss? Calvin Ridley, your superstar for the week. Well, uh, he did not he's, practice. Yeah. On Wednesday. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, he's uh, got a foot injury. Can't right hurt now. you if he's hurt <laughs> himself. Wednesday can easily be a veteran day of rest, so monitor today's practice report, which we'll talk about tomorrow. All right, we'll take a break and get back into the next matchup. The Arizona Cardinals at three and four take on the two and four Miami Dolphins, who have been reborn with a new quarterback. The DraftKings Sportsbook line Miami minus three and a half. The over under is forty five and a half. So we get to talk about more exciting things in this matchup than we have in previous Miami weekends. Yeah, there is a chance of some thunderstorms here. A little bit rain, a little bit of wind. Don't, say not, Don't not, tell me that. Yeah, I mean, it's not um, egregious. It's certainly not something that's going to move lines or uh, make you um, completely pivot off of players. Obviously, on the Miami side of the ball, I think you want just about everyone in this matchup. The Cardinals are, at best, when they're showing their best, they are a middle-of-the-pack defense. Their personnel is bottom-five defense. Tua coming back, this is a home game. The excitement, the palpitation. Whoa. It, it's, it's That's gonna, the bad guy in the, uh, Star Wars. Senator Palpitation. Senator Palpitation. <laughs> Senator Palpitation will be leading. He'll be in the stands. Yes, thank you, Mike. Um, so I, I think it's pretty easy on the, like on the Dolphins' side. The conversation is Raheem Mostert. Because everyone else is in. Is that? Is that is yeah, that, Moster's fine to flex this week, I think. And and Waddle's he's limited, so Waddle's still a risk because he's keeps limping off the field. Is it his quad? But he, for now, okay, yeah, it's, it's his leggings. Leggings, yeah. Um, it, yeah, it's the quad right now. He was limited in practice. He'll probably play. He'll probably limp off a couple times, and you hope he catches a big play. Tyreek, though. The receiving prop is at 82 and a half, and yes. like you said, play all the Dolphins. It's so nice to see his prop at a serviceable first-round fantasy pick value. You would like to look at this game, at least I would, as the potential for a shootout. It's a three-and-a-half point uh, gap. It's a 45-and-a-half point over-under. I'd like to believe that Arizona can keep up in this game. The Dolphins' defense has been very good. I think some of that has been a product of, you know, that's all they have had to lean on. They have not been in games where it takes very much to get by them. They have, you know, <laughs> weren't they the ones that lost to, to Richardson 13 10 or something? Like, there have they, been these. Yeah, say so they, they're the defense. I don't it, know if they're as good as they show right no, now. No, the, the numbers I think are fraudulent. Last week it was against the Colts. They gave up 16 points and lost. Uh, before the bye week, they, uh, they won holding the New England Patriots to 10 points. So we're talking Brissett? Yes. And we're talking But before that it was Anthony Richardson. Before that they Tennessee put up 31, Seattle put up 24, Buffalo put up 31, and Jacksonville managed 17 in week. Are one. you are you doing anything with Marvin Harrison? I'm playing practically right now. No. No, he's he it it's a I'm a I am practically adjusting my expectations for him of he's a He's a wide receiver two type of a play who does have a real ceiling. Is Trey McBride the most disappointing tight end five uh, at I don't this think juncture? So. I, I don't I think, think so. so. Um, <clears throat> he is doing his best rookie year, Kyle Pitts, where his involvement, utilization, yardage, they're, they're pretty outstanding for the tight end position. You're just not getting big performances because he doesn't have a, a receiving touchdown this year. So I, I think you continue to play McBride with confidence. It's just difficult to know all of the passing metrics against the Dolphins. You you have to just kind of push to the side. We're, we they just, have to reset. We don't know if it is extremely difficult to throw on the Dolphins or if the quarterbacks who have faced them, as well as the need to throw on them, is really what's causing the, the uh, suffocation of those stats. Jordan Love was on pace for how many touchdowns? 50-something? 51. Kyler's on pace for 21. Mm, give mm. If you want to ask answer to the question of why Trey McBride doesn't have any, yeah. it's because Kyler doesn't have many. Kyler's looked bad. James Conner has been the offense. I mean, the offense has been James Conner being 
James Conner. Like he is very few players have a motor like James Conner to put up 101 yards last week against the Chargers defense. Caught two passes, 51 yards through the receiving game. Didn't score, but still finished top 15. Connor has been so trustworthy. And I and in that game, you didn't see D DeMarcado or Benson getting playing time. This is an awesome matchup for Connor. Everyone's been able to run pretty well against the Dolphins. Um, you know, they might have Jalen Ramsey and some some pieces that you worry about in the defense, but not to stuff the run. So Connor is 100% in. And Kyler confidence this week? Uh, Kyler is confident in the sense that, like, I don't have a ton of confidence in a lot of quarterbacks this week. So Kyler is my quarterback eleven right now. So he's started, but you're not excited. Like, he, would, he would needs you, to run the football. Would you play Caleb Williams against Washington? I have who, I have Caleb my, ahead of Kyler. That is my decision this week. Those Where, two what players. are you leaning right now? I've gone back and forth. I think Caleb's in my lineup right now. Okay. Um, I also am the Connor manager, so it's a bit of a it would be a bit of a hedge right. against the Cardinals. What's happened with the Cardinals this year is there have been games where they just are incompetent on offense. You thought Detroit could be a shootout, they scored thirteen points. You thought Washington could be a shootout, they scored fourteen points. You thought Green Bay could be a shootout, they scored thirteen points. All three of those games had high over and unders that they disappointed on. Mm -hmm. When they fail, they kind of just fall on their face and look incompetent. So to me, for my team, I'm I'm thinking I want to hedge against that. I think they're going to fail this week. I look the stat that came out on Monday Night Football was mind blowing. Kyler Murray has not won back to back games in 25 starts or something like that. It's 22 to 25 starts. When he wins a game, he loses the next week, and he's he done won that. last week. I know. Yeah. So I'm just – it's amplifying your point. The Cardinals' implied team total is 21 points. I don't think they hit that. So you would you play Tank Dell or Marvin Harrison? Tank Dell. Whoa. Mike? Uh, I'm on the Harrison side. I'd go Marvin. But I don't, I don't like the Stroud week this week. So they're, I mean, they're, they're, they're both in a similar tier to me of that low-end wide receiver too, but – Marv can go out and Marv could be the number one wide receiver on a week. Yeah, I've got Marv as my wide receiver twenty five tank as my wide receiver twenty one. The Jets are two and five. They take on the one and six New England Patriots, who have lost six straight games. And uh they look real bad. DraftKings Sportsbook line, Jets minus seven on the road. The two and five Jets are seven point road favorites. The over under is forty one. The Jets last year under Zach Wilson were four and three at this juncture of the I season. Don't care. They're two and five under Aaron Rodgers this year. Aaron Rodgers is dealing with head, shoulders, knees, and toes. He's dealing with being old. Yeah, I mean, I'm, it's the same stuff we feel, guys. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ramondre still didn't practice uh, on Wednesday. Uh, it's listed as foot slash personal. My feet are personal to me. Um, <laughs> Gibson has been awful. I have no confidence in, in in Gibson, even in the solo role personally. Hunter Henry is more involved with Drake May. I don't – this game is not exciting to me. I'm not – what if they lost? Just the think Jets. about it. They, what if the Jets lost this I, game? I could, I could see that as a possible outcome. Obviously, they're heavy uh, favorites here on the road, the New York Jets are. But, I mean, the Patriots at home to a reeling Jets who are not winning games and find ways to lose every week – you've seen crazier things happen. And if they lose this week, oh my season's over for the Jets. But it's okay. I heard uh, – so Aaron Rodgers came out and said that after that loss, Devontae Adams gave the best locker room speech he's ever heard. So I think they're going to be okay. Okay. Adams has been quite comedic since coming over because he's had multiple speeches to the media talking about the things that this team has done wrong all year long after one week of being with the team, <laughs> which I find to be very – Interesting. It it's kind of feels dysfunctional over there. Adams, he's in your lineup. Yep. Garrett Wilson, he's in the lineup. Hundred percent. Brees Hall. Yep. Great matchup. The, Aaron Rodgers. What? It, where's his flexibility? Where's his like spot in a two start? quarterback? Yeah. Or or even um, you know, I could see him being a lot like Sam Darnold tonight. I would, against I'd play the, Darnold. I would okay. play Darnold easily. Uh, Rogers Brock is, Purdy is with all the injuries at wide receiver or, or Aaron Rodgers? Brock Purdy easily. That's a heavy favorite. Let me ask you. The, I've got three names for you. that I, I mean, Rodgers has not been that bad for fantasy. So would you play 
uh, Rogers here. Yeah, he's been pretty bad. Yeah, he's been he's been. Pretty Mike bad. was Mike was just looking at me, waiting for me to correct <laughs> myself. I would play Bo Nix against Carolina I over would too. Aaron Rodgers. The two names that I'm not sure about: Anthony Richardson and Russell Wilson. So and that's the tier: Anthony Richardson, Russell Wilson, Aaron Rodgers. I think I would start Anthony Richardson in the dome against the the Texans, where he already had a big monstrous game week one. You would take Richardson, you said? I would take the I, upside potential. Both these guys, I think, have the potential to go out there and dud. But I don't know if Aaron Rodgers has the chance to go out and do a 30-point game. I don't know if he can dud in this game against New England. I really don't. I think here's how you dud. Um, most teams have run like crazy against – Yeah, just, just Brees Hall. If, it, if Brees Hall and yeah. Braylon Allen okay. go, you could have a real dud here. Any – you know, what do you do with Ramondre right now? He, when he plays, he's not been good. Yeah, I, they you, they're not going to be playing from ahead. You try to bench him, if at all possible. I mean, he's. He, I'm going to try and succeed. the 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 matchup is awful. He the he's been hurt. What I feels like forever now. So I he's. I'm trying to get out of it this week. Atlanta's four and three. They take on the four and three Tampa Bay Buccaneers. It's a creamsicle jersey week for Tampa. Oh, let's go. And Atlanta is two and a half point road favorites. The over/under is forty six. Um, I don't think we're going to see near the fireworks we saw a couple weeks ago, with no Mike Evans, no Chris Godwin. Cousins went crazy. It was a back and forth type of game. This is this a, feels like we get to see the running game make a bigger mark for Tampa. It, the on the Tampa Bay side, this is the. Let's find out what happened. I mean, we had to make our uh, the best guesses we could on the waiver wire, but it's how or what wide receiver goes where. Jalen McMillan, yeah, just, Trey Palmer, Sterling, Sterling Shepard. Shepard. It they're all that's slot a, wide. They're that's all a gross combo of <laughs> names. Just, they all would do better as the slot player, and the the slot player for this offense is like that. That role is very valuable. That it, they won't be as good as Chris Godwin, obviously. But but that's how but, they scheme but the, it. But the offense runs through the 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 slot wide receiver. So it's who gets it? Is it Jalen McMillan, the rookie who hasn't played there yet? Uh, so it's just I like I paid a lot for McMillan off of the waiver wire, but as a hoping that he is actually runs in the slot after this week of practice because once uh, like he, he kind of took over for 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 Evans you know like he was an outside player he's been an outside player the whole time so it would be it would be a, a shifting of the the wide receiver pieces to put him into the slot and I I don't know what's best for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers here but it's going to be a lot of really good information this week while I'm trying not to play anybody yeah data gather yes now would, if I had to flex Otten or McMillan I would flex oh, Otten yes Otten yes. I think is the his lines at 47 and a half the most assured of agreed easy catchable targets if you're in a full PPR Otten should be okay I mean he should have like seven or eight targets in this game if I had to play one of the other three wide receivers I mean I get I get McMillan um he has a much higher ceiling than Sterling Shepard because at 31 point whatever years old, Sterling Shepard has – His knees are 67 years yeah, old. Yeah, Shepard's at the bottom for me has of, lost, those, but of those three. I'd play Trey Palmer over to, Yeah, to me, Shepard is, I think, the I, – I believe he will have the next highest target amount. They won't be very valuable. I have, a, I have ramped up my confidence in Rashad White rest of season. After what we saw last week, he was a direct beneficiary. We know when wide receivers go out, the target share gets distributed to running backs, and literally Rashad White's one of the best at that in the game. They're going to lean on him. I I believe that they're going to lean on him. And, you know, he had his he had his best game of the week last week. Bucky Irving is currently not practicing. It's worth knowing. Yeah. And I think Rashad White becomes somebody that you no longer have to Fear to start at least at this juncture. Yeah, the receiving work is going to be there. I mean, he was six for seventy-one through the air last week. That's you know, we were talking about Sterling. Sterling Shepard is praying he can get to six for seventy-one in the receiving game. So plus the the rushing work, uh, fine with White. Bijan, play him. Drake London, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, Darnell Mooney, yeah, I'm playing him. Kyle Pitts, I'm playing him. Tyler Algier in a game where they're favored. Against the defense is 22nd against the run. 
You willing to flex? Like, would you play Tyler Algier over Ramondre Stevenson this week? Oh, no. my gosh. I, I personally wouldn't. The, you, you can still run on the Jets as well. The Buccaneers, if you adjust for the schedule they've played, they're, they're still a really good run defense. And they had a couple games without Vita Vea. I, I think that the the between the tackles running style of Algier just matches up poorly in this matchup personally. Okay, anybody else you want to discuss in this one? I think we covered it all. I mean, it's just, it, we, did we talk Baker? Laser? I guess we should talk Baker and Kirk oh, Cousins. Oh, my laser. Yeah. Do you have like a less powerful laser? Oh, yeah, which is pew, pew, pew. <laughs> That's oh. a sad laser. Yeah, yeah no, it should it be a sad laser. It is a sad, sad laser. laser. I'm <laughs> like sad a, about like it. Like a laser that when it shoots, it starts to trail off. You know how lasers is always go? Like this one has yeah, limited. It's, it's light. This one has limited range, it, though. It just It's like a limp. It, it it's goes. a limp laser. <laughs> right, Al? Yeah, no, he knows all about Al, that. you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, for sure. Totally. Yeah, man. Would um, you, uh, laser or? Cousins I'm, in the same game. I'd go Cousins. I was trying to find a, like, Geno Smith against Buffalo or Baker Mayfield. Geno. Geno. I, I have the hardest time playing Kirk Cousins any week because his lows are, he has five games outside the top 20 at the position. He has two games in the top 10. What about? There have been lots of times when he, and I don't, I don't care that, yes, he had a big game against them last time. That is not how it works. They don't always have big games against the same team. He doesn't have two of his best wide receivers. So it's very concerning to me that the low can be that low. Yeah, I think he has, low, he has low, one game above 20 points. Two over can, both. Two over both, yes. Okay. Uh, the low can be very low for Kirk Cousins because of the one-two punch of Algier and Bijan. We've seen that when those running backs get the touchdowns, like a couple weeks ago when they had three combined touchdowns, Kirk played a great game, but his low was terrible for fantasy. The matchup-wise, it's not that he did it before against this team, and so he's always going to be great against Tampa. It's more to me about the fact that Tampa is a pass funnel. It's very difficult to run on them, and it's pretty easy to throw on them. So I think if the Falcons have a good game, which I think they should, then it will be more towards Kirk Cousins in this matchup. That's kind of how I view it. I, I think Kirk Cousins is an okay play. I think that Aaron Rodgers will have a better game than Kirk Cousins. Ooh, Ooh. let's do that one. Oh. Let's put that one up. Water bet. That's not the side I want to be on. <laughs> You're betting on Rodgers. Betting on Rodgers. Yeah. Yeah. Green Bay, five and two. Jacksonville, two and five. Oh yeah. Green Bay minus three and a half. The over under is forty nine and a half. That gives Green Bay twenty six and a half points. Jacksonville twenty three. There have been times this year though that Green Bay's defense has made a an exciting game yeah, not they've, they've not exciting. Faltered. Their offense should be fine. Their offense, Love, Jacobs, Reed, Dobbs, and Tucker Craft, play, 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 play. And Wicks is in the if you need to. Wicks and Watson are both in the, in the would, if you need to. I would play Wicks over Watson. I'm totally fine with that. They, they, are, they are basically identical players. They're each going to get half the opportunity for that role and keep the other one fresh. That seems like what the, the, the game plan has been where it's like Reed and Dobbs are out there and then they're kind of rotating Wicks and, and yep. Watson and a little bit of the Butterman, um, <laughs> Bo Melton. But both well, – Everyone knows who the Butterman is, Jason. I know. Nobody the, knows who the Butterman is. Everyone knows. Everyone knows, Andy. It's uh, the Butterman. Wicks has been the better player. Yeah, Wicks, Wicks has been the better player. That's why I'm fine putting him just above Watson. But I see well, I them as – I don't want to play either one, honestly. Yeah, I would agree. Uh, but, uh, this matchup, though, kind of makes it tempting. Yeah, no, no doubt. I mean – you could definitely like one of it's probably Wicks or Watson will probably get a touchdown. Put it one this of them way. probably will. Over I don't know who it is. Over under three and a half touchdowns for Jordan Love. Under I right, know, you'd probably under. take the under. Three. That's an I think he throws. I think he throws three. I think he throws four, and I think he could throw five in this one. But my point is, <laughs> against give the me a six <laughs> against the Jacksonville Jaguars. It's just. Um, you should have at least three passing touchdowns. Brian Thomas is in. Evan Ingram was limited, but his receiving line is at 48 and a half. He's yeah. in. Yes, he is. Um, people asked me this morning if ETN's active, would you play him or Bigsby? My answer to that for this week was I would play Bigsby, and I am waiting on ETN to prove to me he's healthy on the field. Sure. I'm at the juncture now where I'm not going to risk 
a limited workload based on the marginal difference that it might represent. Bigsby, to me, will play the whole game. Etienne could get hurt and go out early. It's a hamstring that he keeps trying to play on. I hope Etienne plays, and my advice would be to take a week off if, in that situation from both Etienne and Bigsby. My logic for that is the antithetical logic to last week, which was Dearness Johnson – Dearness Johnson is more of the pass catching back here, at least when 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 ETN was off the field. We saw that when they were down, when they were trailing. They didn't use Tank Bigsby a lot. They're not using Tank Bigsby in the passing situations hardly at all. I mean, he, he, he's out Correct. there for a pass or two no, it's, a game. It's Dearness Johnson. But it, it's Dearness Johnson, or it may be Travis ETN if ETN's back. Tank is really who they're using as a tank when they've got that lead. And like last week, they had a lead against the, the uh, Patriots. It worked. I expect them to be way down in this game against the Packers. So, it, to me, I would love to have an excuse to bench Tank Bigsby this week. I don't expect a big game for him. Injury updates. Jaden Daniels not seen practicing again Thursday. Plans to attempt oh, to practice Friday. Gonna, he's going to give it a good college try. He's going to think about attempting to practice. That's what he's doing right now. All right, we're going to jump He's into those VR reps right now. Visualize. Yeah, he does do that. He does do that. About attempting to practice. Um, parlay parte time. Uh, this was the brutal. Well, this you know what? You you know who you invite to to parties? Clowns. Yeah, three, that's right. Three clowns. Three well three clowns. handsome cr clowns. When Evan Ingram needs 40 total yards and he has uh what 34 30, in the second quarter 34 by halftime i'm a clown when geno smith needs 250 yards and he's at 180 at halftime and he finishes you're a clown with 207 and when Deontay, geno. when deontay johnson has one catch for 17 yards yeah you're a clown i am a clown uh triple clown i'm not that's having the first triple clown of the year it is and it's i'm uh, not it's having be, fun at this party it's gonna be the last triple look at look at us on the screen right now we look we look slightly better than that guy. We oh, oh you still gosh. got the still got the tissue Why in there. Why do you still have that in? There is no chance it's still bleeding. He's, he's really sounding the, the this, nosebleed. <laughs> this is a prop at that <laughs> yeah. point. At this point, no, I uh, don't want to see. No, no, this is where he takes it out and just gushes <laughs> blood. Just uh, ruins our our production computers. Just. Okay, all right. all right. Listen, I was very vocal earlier that I was going to bring up C.J. Stroud. The number here. I'm going under 255.5 passing yards. He's been under that line in four of seven games. He simply does not have the personnel to do this right now and doesn't need to. He doesn't need to in this game because this defense is – Anthony Richardson is not going to put up a ton of points, and Joe Mixon is running out of his mind, and Nico Collins is the engine that makes this offense go in the passing game. C.J. Stroud showed me a new low last week. What was it? Eighty-five passing yards. Mm -hmm. um, Tank Dell right now is not reliable enough to me. I don't think they're going to need to throw the ball to the tune of two hundred fifty-five and a half passing yards at all in this game. I'm taking the under on CJ Stroud. I believe as as I've got Stroud as start of the week. I think both can be true. I think he can be a start of the week, have three touchdowns and two hundred twenty-five passing yards against the Colts. So that's fine. I don't have a problem with you taking the the under on that. I'm also going to take an under. Um, and it's sad. This one feels bad because we love the man. We're happy for him. Nicholas. Nicholas Chubb. Nicholas. Uh, I, I've, I've got him under 50 and a half rushing yards. He came out last week, got man. some work, got 11 carries. It was great. Great to see him. Got a touchdown. He averaged two yards a carry. This, he had 22 rushing yards. This is against the Baltimore Ravens. They're very – teams are throwing 67% of the time against the Ravens. I expect a lot of Jameis dropping back. Sling in the rock. I don't know how involved Chubb will be yet in the running game. So I think right now, week two, while they're progressing him back towards Nick Chubb's status, under 50 and a half feels feels pretty safe, especially if they get down in this game. That that's not the type of game that Chubb gets a ton of work. I'm putting my start of the week into the parte. What could go wrong? Javante Williams over 55 and a half <laughs> rushing yards. <laughs> Every opposing running back, I have clown hair in my mouth. <laughs> yeah, no, delicious. That's, it's part of part of the price. <laughs> uh, it's oh, what is happening? Every opposing running back, uh, not named Zamir White, has passed this line against the Carolina Panthers. Let's go. 
All right, you're going, Javante, and that was Fantasy Forecast presented by DraftKings Pick 6. Download the new DraftKings Pick 6 app now and use the code BALLERS. That's the code BALLERS for new customers to play $5 and get $50 in Pick 6 credits. That is going to do it today. But we'll be back tomorrow with the rest of the matchups, less clown hair, a fantasy face-off that I am telling you, you don't want to miss it. I do want to miss it. Yeah, you, you will want to miss it. All right, goodbye. Goodbye. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Must be 18 and over. Age and eligibility restrictions vary by jurisdiction. Void where prohibited. One per new customer. Non-withdrawable Pick 6 credits expire in six months. Limited time offer. See terms at pick6.draftkings.com slash promos.